the basis to Kids in the Creek. And, uh, I don't know the author of this, but it, it goes like this. Tell me, and I may remember. Show me, and I might understand. But involve me, and I'll never forget. That, this one has gills. Yeah. We gotta go. So what does that mean? It's a um, um, stone fly, or may fly. Yeah. All of a sudden, they, their eyes are opened up to a whole new world there, and awareness of what's going on. listen to them, hear the excitement in their voice and, uh, and, and the giggling and the laughing they're, 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 and the concern. They want to know what's going on and they're, they're just pointing things and they're showing things to their friends. Whereas before, you know, they, you, you, well, that's not cool. Yeah, this is awesome. It's like so, it's like so fun but it's educational and stuff. It's really cool. Kids in the Creek is a multidisciplinary, hands-on watershed awareness and educational program. It's, we design it to be fun, safe, as well as educational. If you get out, you're involved in it, you're in an educational, real-life learning process, and then when you go back into the classroom, you pick up that book and all of a sudden a light bulb goes off. <laughs> this does make sense, I do understand. Or what I'm learning has some relevance here. So. Like in the book would probably just be copying stuff out, and then like here we get to experiment and like actually like feel the fish yeah. and catch them and see what kind they are and I have. Think, and we're like, and we actually get to catch them ourselves. It's kind of like an adventure, like a challenge to do that. I definitely. I think, think you, you learn like more when here. you're having fun. Yeah. I think you definitely learn more when you're having fun. A lot this is a great way to do it. Kids in the Creek, it's, it's a one-day normal school hours event, so uh, we start at 9 o'clock in the morning and we're generally through by 2.30 in the afternoon. And this gets kids back to school in time for, to catch their buses or, you know, their rides home. We picked them up, but then they would revive after a little while. They put like 400 volts into the water. And then we got to observe them and do this little project on pollution. We have fish. They're very fun. <laughs> When we're having the kids in the creek event, all the kids need to bring is an old pair of tennis shoes, a change of clothes, just in case they get wet, and a towel dry off with. In exchange for that, we hope we give them a whole brain full of, uh, of good biological science, a good day of learning. Did you give relationship Safety is first and foremost, and we emphasize it continuously throughout the, the day's events with the kids in the creek program. Kids in the Creek is for everyone. Uh, even we've had kids out with physical handicaps or possibly, even possibly phobias or didn't want to get in the water or anything like that. So what uh, I try to do and, and my crew or the, all the people that help out, we try to bring kids in the Creek to them. If they don't want to come in the water, we'll bring the fish or the benthics or you know our aquatic sample over to them so they can see it, touch it, you know, handle it, ask questions about it, whatever. If you guys want to gather around, you can, uh, you can handle these and release them as we count them, okay? Anybody want to handle some fish? Me? 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 <laughs> oh my god, this is awesome! <laughs> Let me eat another one. Six. That's another war paint. Here's another one. What? The war paints are the ones that have the mouth on that are bleak pointed head. Okay? And these are, these are pretty paint. small. Keep yeah. in count. Yeah. There's a, there's and then there's another, there's another shiner here. That's a mirror shiner there. He's got his mouth, his head's more rounded. rounded. And he's got a triangular spot in his tail. When we're doing Kids in the Creek, we're really doing a real biological assessment out there in the streams. It's called uh, an index of biotic integrity, so we're trying to follow those protocols as close as possible. And so the kids know they're involved in a real, uh, real-time data collection process for, for assessing the stream's health, so it's not just a show and tell. You guys are doing a great job with these numbers. Right here in the Pigeon River, we had a significant find by the kids. At the benthic education station, the kids were out there looking for aquatic insects and other benthic organisms. Well, they found a mussel. That's very significant. That's the first time since 1913 that a live mussel had been found at this site. It's sampled at least every two to five years by professional biologists, and they have not found it. All of a sudden, we've got a group of kids out here and they've come up with a major find. Pretty neat stuff. Another thing Kids in the Creek does, it gives them exposure to uh, environmental science careers. We have 
uh, engineers out there, water quality engineers, and bio engineers out there. We have fisheries biologists. We have uh, benthic biologists out there. We have uh, communicators, educators, all these help out. So kids, they, they learn that or they get exposed to that. And I think that's, that's a great opportunity for them. The basic focus of Kids in the Creek is to teach students and participants the basic factors influencing a stream's biological health. The first learning station is where we take the kids through the index of biotic integrity process and we're shocking fish. So what do we do to shock fish? We have a, a backpack shocker on our biologist. Uh, this temporarily stuns the fish. We have the kids and waiters so they don't feel any of the shock. They help hold an, a seine. Just like a uh, post and a car battery, the current runs between them and uh, any fish between those will be stunned and uh, will recover very shortly afterwards. But generally with the current flowing the way it is, we'll get washed nicely into a net and uh, we can count them, measure them and get their ID and let them go. We're taking data and again, we get, we get one of the kids to help take the data. This is put onto uh, data sheets where it's entered into a computer. They'll, they'll look at the species of fish. We'll help them identify the, the fish. This is a stone rope. We'll also talk to them about some of these species are, have, are pollution tolerant, some are intolerant. Some of them have kind of a delicate life history and they're, they're aging things. So that means that this is a good place. When you, when you see that many saffrons and that many war paints, that means you've got pretty good water. Quality. So those are, are indicators of, uh, of a stream's health. If we're finding all tolerant species then, and no intolerance, then that indicates a problem with the stream. If we're finding uh, both tolerant and intolerant, then we can make a general assumption that the stream's in pretty good health. Then we, we as biologists have to take this back and assess the data, but you can make generalizations when you're out there in the field, and the kids can do this too. People fish for these lots. Anybody catch any of these? I have a bunch of them. Oh man, I want you to like them. They're fun. Same thing happens with, with the benthic organisms, the aquatic insects. You go to different habitats in the stream. Some organisms live under rocks. Some live under in uh, leaf piles. Some live in the grasses of the stream. They're just flat on the bottom of the stream. So those are all different habitats. Same thing in fish. So you look at all those habitats. You take the kids through this process, and they collect all this information. You help them ID it. We don't want to heat them up too much. A hellgramat. We're picking out all the insects and all the little bugs that we find in the creek. We've got a lot of different kinds of insects here that we got out of the stream. What does that mean? Some insects are real sensitive to pollution. If we find a lot of those in the creek, that means the creek is real healthy. It's in the maple plant family. It's the first one he found today. It's like a little hard shell and two little spikes on the side. He said it was like le less tolerant than the rest of these. Ten guys probably. Guess what we found around here? Yeah, there's there's less insects in this creek than there is in, in the other one. And there's not many different varieties of fish either, because this okay, one's guys, dirtier and it's got the more like sediment and stuff in it. And it's hard for if trout don't live in this river because. It's hard for them to lay their eggs because there's really much gravel around here. Yeah, they lay their eggs in gravel and uh, the water passes through the gravel and it gives the eggs oxygen. And in this river there's too much dirt so it covers the eggs and, it, and um, they don't get that much oxygen. And then you look at water chemistry and we look at just basic parameters. We take the kids through, they look at dissolved oxygen, we tell them how important that is to the fish and also the insects and how they, they have to have good oxygen for good water quality. The pH, basic water quality parameters. Uh, fish could not live in orange juice because it's got a high amount of acids and uh, makes it have a low pH. A good temperature is 54 degrees. And then our fourth station, we call our watershed education. Quite often in our watershed education uh, station, we also use the Enviroscape. It's, it's a, an actual watershed model. Creek and a stream and looked into it, what do you see? 
Well, it's muddy, right? Yeah. It's real muddy, okay? <laughs> That's where your topsoil is getting washed into bodies of water and it becomes sediment. It soaks to the bottom and it's really clogging up our streams. We can look at uh, stream bank conditions, whether they're natural or man-made, whether they're good or bad, and then how I talk about fixes. Or we can even turn the watershed ed uh, station into actually doing a project, a bioengineering project. We can plant trees to stabilize the stream bank, or we might fix a small erosion runoff ditch, turn it into a walkway to where it not only cascades the water down or softens the impacts, but it can also be used to access uh, to get closer to the water. One of the things I want the kids to take away from Kinsey Creek is, is to, to learn something that the more, or the diversity of, of, uh, of animals or, and insects, or fish and insects that we, they find living in the stream, then, then the stream probably or generally is going to have a better health. If you don't see something there, you just go and you see the water's clear, you just assume that it's okay. Uh, I want them to know they need to see living things in that stream. That is important. And, and to be comfortable with that, not to be afraid of it. I don't think it's not very many. Oh, cool. Whoa, that was a big one. At the end of the day, you want them to be able to think about that and, and what they learn. What, why was the stream in good shape, you know? Did it have good riparian zones along the stream bank? Vegetation covering the banks, was there, or if it's a poor stream, is it heavily eroded? What, what's the deal? Are there non-point sources out there, straight pipes? What, what's going on? So they, they have an awareness, and so they'll think about that a little bit. What do you guys think of this site compared to your other site? It's nasty. It's nasty. It's dirty here. How many bugs? Very How many types of bugs? Very few bugs. Um, there wasn't um, like a riparian buffer. Like the there's not as much vegetation around the yeah. on the sides and stuff. So it can just go the dirt and stuff can just go on in and without like all the roots and stuff to hold it back. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the kids when they come away from Kids in the Creek, they, they'll probably never look at a stream the same way again. If there's community programs or actions or. or issues, they're, they're going to want to get involved. I mean, they won't look at it from like it's just a, a body of water there. They'll, they'll, look, they'll look below the surface because really we've taken them there. Woo! <laughs>